Hey guys, welcome to another video. We're going to talk about why people seem to have so much apprehension about stepping away from a 12 volt system and going with a 24 volt or 48 volt. Well, I'm going to explain to you why exactly it's not that scary and it's pretty simple. Let's get to it. All right, guys, so in another video, I said I was going to be moving my 24 volt to 12 volt uh, converters over here and making more space for a possible solar. So, and I actually used way too big a wire than I actually needed. I just happened to have one out wire, so that's what I used, but I went ahead and I bought some two gauge wire to replace this with to make it a little more tidy and neat. But we're gonna move this stuff here and then we're gonna talk about exactly why stepping up from 12 volt to 24 volt or 48 volt is not that scary and has way more advantages, especially on a bigger system. Smaller, well, we'll go over all those things, uh, big and small, what the advantages and disadvantages of staying 12 volt or moving up to 24 volt and 48 volt. And it's really pretty simple to maintain your 12 volt systems with even though you have a 24 volt or 48 volt inverter and batteries. So we'll go over all that mess, but let's get this moved and we'll get to it. Basically, all we're going to do is we're going to change out this one knot cable for some two gauge. It's a little bit thinner, a little easier to work with. And instead of using a, uh, one of the slots on the distributor, Link's distributor, we're actually going to pigtail out the back and we're just going to use a breaker. This is an 80 amp breaker. Each one of these is 70 amps. And when you run them in parallel, that gives you 140 working amps and so why did i get an 80 amp breaker if i have a, a 140 amps because these are 140 12 volt output and this would be where it's coming from the batteries is 24 volt so basically it's half the amperage going into it and then doubling the amperage going out because you just change the voltage it's not that scary every time you double the voltage you cut the amperage in half. So it's pretty simple. And this should be due, this should be plenty for any kind of overloads or anything like that. So it's basically, these can push out up to like, I think 80 or 85 amps at 12 volt each. So at max, but running at 70 amps. So this will protect it. it. I don't think we'll ever have anything that big of a draw, but this will be basically 80 amps for 24 volt is like 160 amps. 12 volt. Simple math. I'll show you guys one more time exactly how we do these. Take my cable clutters, cutters, find out exactly how much wire I need. I just kind of squeeze it, rotate it. So I can fart, start to feel wire, pull that off. Put that on. Got my crimper, give it a nice tug, make sure it's on good. Put my heat shrink on. And then just shrink it up. Pretty simple. And I just do the same thing, cut to length. So it's that easy guys. And then we'll just uh, take some measurements, see what we need and put this back in. All right, and we're also gonna go over some do's and don'ts for wire sizing when we get done with this. All right guys, so I got it in. And all I basically did was I took it off from this, this port here because eventually I want to add maybe another small charge controller for solar up here. And I'll use that slot. 
but then I just use come out the side where you would normally add another Lynx distributor and just went through the sides and added the 80 amp breaker here, my parallel 24 volt to 12 volt converters here, and to two little bus bars so I can add stuff. I even put these little tabs right here, basically as like terminal blocks. And you know, I have one of those uh, via air compressors and I can just, that come with the little gator clips, you usually clip to your battery for your truck. I can just clip it to there and I get 12 volt power to my air compressor to air up the tires for the RV. Kind of handy. All right, last thing to do is to, let's turn, send power, turn on the solar, and it's inverting. I'm sure the ACs will kick on because it is summertime and it's hot. I would highly recommend getting all this stuff done, not in the summertime in Florida, some other time. We're gonna go have a little chat about wire sizing, 12 volt versus 24 volt versus 48, when to, when to use it, when not to use it, and do all over that mess. So let's head over there. All right, well, we're gonna start off by just talking about wire size, uh, do's and don'ts. Yeah, but I'm gonna preface this with, you know, I'm not a professional electrician. I'm just a guy on the internet that's done a lot of research and understands the basics of electricity and stuff. So I always recommend, this is not a how-to, this is a how we did it, and hopefully it'll help you guys out. And I always recommend doing as much research as you possibly can and making sure you understand everything about the system you're installing before you start installing it. Um, I was just watching a recent YouTube video where somebody caught on fire because they didn't, their, their little basement area because they didn't have, uh, you know, any protection with fuses and stuff like that and might have been wire size issue and stuff. But anyway, I don't want any to see that happen to you guys. So I'm just, we're just sharing this stuff with you. But as far as gauges goes, do's and don'ts. Like I said, I don't tell anybody what to do. I'm just giving you my advice on how I think you should go about it. But you do you, but this is my two things. Don't go on Facebook or forums online and ask people because they may not know exactly everything about your system that they need to know to give you the size wire that you need to use. I recommend finding the maximum amount of amperage your system is going to use and use that as your benchmark. And then go onto a professional website that has uh, charts for amperage and distance and go by those charts and use those that gauge wire. That's what I've done, and I've actually, sometimes if it was kind of close, I just bump it up to the next next size wire so that I'm um, covered. I really have a little extra than not enough to keep things running cool. And as far as that goes, that's what I'm talking about with the amperage. Amperage is the enemy. The less amperage that you have, the appropriate size wire, the less heat you're gonna have to have. Think of it this way. If you have a toaster or a hairdryer, Basically what that does is it pushes a lot of amps through a small wire and that wire heats up. And that's where you get your heat for your toaster or for your hairdryer. And of course it's regulated so that it doesn't overheat and catch fire. But if you running a system with too small a wire or too much amperage going through it with no control, it could, you know, create, it creates heat and it can create a fire or something like that. So you just want to make sure that you're, be safe guys. And that, that's coming down to where we talk about 12 volt versus 24 volt versus 48 volt. Like I said previously, Ohm's law, volts times amps equals watts. So if you have 3000 watts over here, you have a 3000 watt inverter and you want to use 3000 watts. You have 12 volts, that takes 250 amps. That's a lot of amps pushing through through line. And, you know, the more amps, the more heat. And you so you take a 24 volt system, you cut those amps in half. Now you're dealing with 125 amps instead of 250. Pretty simple. And you need a lot smaller wire to carry that much amperage through the line. And that's where people get confused because they hear us talk about like a 200 amp hour battery that at 12 volts, that's like 2,500 watts ish. And at 24 volts, 200 amp hour battery, that's like 5,000 watts. So you get twice the amount of wattage if you double the volts. So if you're running just a couple hundred amp hours of 12 volt, and you're just running one inverter that's like max 3,000 watts, 
I would recommend just sticking with 12 volt. Uh, you really don't need to exceed that, but you still need big wire to run that. That's a lot of amperage. But, you know, if you're going to run two inverters, I highly recommend bumping up to 24 volt. It's super easy. And, uh, or even 48 volts if you want to go through a huge system. And the only reason I wouldn't suggest going to 48 volt is because of the solar. You have to have a lot of solar panel in series to get enough amperage to be able to, your MPPT charge controller to push down to create the 52 volts to charge or 53 volts or whatever it is to charge your batteries at that. And you want to be over at least 20 volts over whatever you're charging, battery charging that. So 24 volts seems to be the nice middle ground. Unless you're going super huge, I would stick with 24 volts. Like we have 800 amp hours of 24 volt. So that's 1600 amp hours of 12 volt. And we have two inverters running parallel. So and there's videos if you haven't been following along. I have a link down in the description area below uh, to our playlist to all our Victron build on the system. But like I was watching a YouTube video where somebody built the system as large, pretty much as large as mine in, 20, in 12 volts. And he went to actually a solar company. You know, they gave him three recommendations. And I asked him, like, why didn't you go 24 uh, volt, 48 volt? He's like, well, they offered that, but I know I understand 12 volt systems, so I went 12 volt. And well, obviously, you don't understand 12 volt systems because if you did, you would know that's a crap load of amperage going through those wires. If you understand volts and amps and how amperage works and how it creates heat, then you probably would have gone 24 volt to get that much wattage going out to your RV. But, you know, everybody does the same. I'm saying I'm not saying that you can't build a 12 volt system, a big 12 volt system. You can. Uh, you just have to make sure you have big wires, make sure you have good connections. You're taking appropriate measures to make sure you don't have any choke points for that amperage to heat up. And like I've seen in other videos where people have, you know, bigger 12 volt systems and then they have to wind up putting in like fans, exhaust fans in their basements and stuff. And uh, uh, temperature regulators that will kick on the fan when it gets too hot so that... Uh, it, just, it just was like the inverters were just getting too hot and shutting down. So, but like, you know, if you go 24 volt, you cut that amperage in half. And then if you go 48 volt, it cuts it in half again. So that's smaller, smaller wire you have to use. Like right now I have all the wires run. I can have 4,800 watts of pushing through those inverters and coming from the batteries. And the, all the wires are barely above ambient temp temperature. They don't really get hot at all because they've been sized correctly. And I, it takes a lot less amperage to go through those wires than if I was to do a 12 volt system, it would have been double. It's simple math and it's not that difficult. Don't be scared guys, it's, it's super easy. All, if you do want to uh, get rid of your lead asset, all you just need is a simple 24 volt to 12 volt converter like I've installed there. It's, it's pretty simple. So, you know, just because you're not familiar with 24 volt or 12 volt systems, either things run on 12 volt or they run on 24 volt or they run on 48 volt or whatever but you can't mix match those things those components together you just have to have something that converts it we have 24 volt batteries we have 24 volt inverters and everything stays cool and running and i can push i can run two acs washer dryer tv pretty much anything i want in my rv with the system and it does not get hot in there i'm pretty sure with a 12 volt system it would probably start overheating. Do your own research. Hopefully this was helpful to you guys. Hopefully uh, that's why we make these videos. Um, like if you have any questions, leave down in the comment section below. Like I said, I'm not a professional. I'm just a guy done research. And if I can answer it, I will. Or if I can point you in the right direction, I'll try to. So if you're into trucks travel, RV full-time living, solar, inverters, all this stuff, follow along. Because, you know, I, I'll leave a link in the description here below for a complete build here. And we're not done yet. Uh, seems like you never are, right? And uh, hopefully uh, that'll help you guys out. And please give this video a big thumbs up. It shows us that you appreciate the content and we appreciate you guys. And hopefully we'll see you guys next week. Bye.